Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and uh, do I have an interesting video for you today. This, today's project is to put up a door in my wife's in the bathroom. When the house was built there was never a door placed between the bedroom and the bathroom and since the kids are getting older now it's time to lock up the wife so they don't see what she's doing or anything like that and uh, they're getting at such an age where you don't want them to see certain things. So I went to Buco and I bought myself a railing, a door and uh, the whole sliding mechanism. So I'm creating a sliding door and I'll show you guys why when we get to the bathroom. Unfortunately, I misunderstood the, the door description. I kind of bought the wrong thing. So am I going to return it? Hell no! I'm not going to return anything. This is what this channel is for. We make things work. We make it fit. That's my motto in life. If it doesn't fit, make it fit. So I'm going to show you guys how to modify a railing and to put up a sliding door. So check it out. Hi guys, subscribe to my channel now so that you do not forget. Hit that bell icon and get notified of my further uploads. Lastly, feel free to comment. Show me some love by giving me a thumbs up at the end of the video. So this is what I bought. Who what's it? Hill Aldum sliding door system. And it said double sliding door system. So I thought, oh they're talking about double wheels on the door, and then I saw this and I saw, oh man, it's the wrong thing. It's for two doors that's sliding past each other. So uh where can I find that one picture to show you guys? See, it's for this. If you have two doors sliding past each other, then you use this double railing system. And as you can see, this system was created to be fitted up against the door frame. So the idea is to fit the railing system flat into the door frame. Only problem is that the railing it's too long and it will never work the way it is so we have to kind of modify the railing and then we have to fit the door also I don't have the right size screws so yeah this is gonna be interesting so the first thing that I'm going to do is I have to modify this railing as you can see the mounting holes are made on this surface because this is supposed to go flat up against the uh, door frame. Unfortunately, we cannot mount it like this. We have to mount it like this, with the door sliding on this side. So we have to make holes on the side of the panel, exactly in the same places where these holes are. Now here's the second problem. We're not going to be able to put a screw on the inside and turn it because this part is in the way so I have to make two holes one this side and one at the bottom so I can take my punch and put the punch through the first hole and then moor in the screw on the other side so this will be the front and this is the back so this will be the part that's going to be flush against the wall where it's going to be mounted to and then the door is going to slide this way. So let's first do that. Okay, so what I'm doing now, I couldn't find a square, so I took my children's play square. It should still work fine because it's still at a 90 degree angle. So even toys are being used in this house for whatever projects they are. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through all the holes and then we're going to make sure that we make a mark exactly kind of center of the beam because I have to make two holes and we're going to do this for every hole that we see okay once we've made the marks there now we can bring the mark down to make sure that we have that 
the, the positioning of where we should put that. And then of course we have to measure the thickness and then get half so that we can pinpoint exactly where we should make our drill holes. So let me just get a, a uh, measuring tape here. There we go. And it looks like 30. So at 15, that's where we make our mark. Okay, and as we said, the distance now is 15. So I can just turn it around, just like this. So 15 millimeters is the center. So there's our first hole. Okay, now we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Just remember what I said, I have to make a hole on this side as well, so I can put my punch through, so we can put this thing in the wall. So let me quickly do that. Now that I've made my marks where the holes are going to be, it's time to use a punch and make a guide hole for the drilling machine. Okie dokie, time to draw the holes. Does it fit? It fits. Okay. And then I need to see if my punch is going to fit. So we're definitely going to use this punch and we're going to put the screw on the inside, take this hammer, da, 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 screw it into the wall. Awesome! Let's quickly do the rest. So much for marking it with the children's toy. It is a little bit off center. This is the one hole, this is the other hole. So it is a, a like oh, a millimeter off center. Now the question is, what the hell is gonna happen on the back side? Is it gonna be out a millimeter as well? Uh, yeah. Now this is gonna be tricky. Unless I put it on top of something and I try and drill straight through from this side to the other side. Ha! Hold on. I'll be back. I just need to go grab some bricks. Some elevation. I was just thinking, it's all fine marking the back side and putting a punch hole and all that. And then, after I saw that this one was a little bit off-center, what is to prevent the hole from being off-center on the other side? Then I'm gonna take my punch, I'm gonna miss the screw totally. So the only other option is to drill through this one, through the bottom, if I can. That way, I know for a fact, it's going to be accurate. And I drilled you. Oh my fucking word. Oh well. The damage is done, let's just go do the rest. Now I've drilled a hole on this side. I drilled it straight through to that side. So as you guys can see, I wasn't too far out though. The holes do actually correspond with my punch marks except for this one. This one is totally out, but otherwise not too bad. It's gonna go into the wall. All I need to do now is just take off the shavings, 
and let's make it smooth. Good stuff. Let's see if it interferes with the, the rotors. Okay. So I can get the screw in. It's going through as you can see. And I can take my punch and hit it in from that side. So the plan is working, the concept is working. Yep, it's rolling quite nicely. Nice! Okay. Time for step number two. So I would like to present to you the door. Now we need to put on our rollers. It's going to slide open to this side. This is the inside of the door. So it has to go on like this. So I'm on the right side. So what we're going to do is we're going to put up our rollers. Now move the chair. I think the best thing for me will be to put the rollers um, evenly spaced as far apart as possible because it needs to carry the weight of the door. So since I've got this nice piece of wood. I think I'm going to put it on the center of this one and on the center of this one. Then at least I know it's equally far apart and it will hang quite straight. You don't want to get closer to the middle, rather keep them on the sides. This is all self tapper screws, so you're just going to take a screwdriver and we're just going to screw them in. We will worry about the adjustments later. So let's quickly just put the, the rollers on. There we go, the first roller is in, we are going to secure it later when we adjust it. We can actually adjust the angle to make sure the door is hanging straight down. So let me quickly do this side. Okay, so as you can see the rollers are in and it just, uh, it's looking good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the bathroom and we're going to take the door and the railing and see how high it's supposed to be fitted. Okay, so let us ignore the, the house for now. Okay, I just came back from night shift. The house hasn't been cleaned yet, so I'll, I'll get to that. But that's not what this video is about. The railing cannot fit on this side of the wall because of the cabinet that's in the way. It is too short, so that means the door has to slide on the inside. As you can see on the inside, we've got lots of space. So that's why we are putting the door on the inside. So what has to move? is that and the toilet roll. I have to remove them from the wall and I have to move them somewhere there or somewhere on that side. We'll see what we're gonna do. But we're going to have to take those off. <coughs> so the door can slide. Okay, so let's first do that. Okay, so I have removed the obstacles that we had. So, uh, I'll take some polyfiller later and just close the holes off. So let's continue with the door. Okay, so as you guys can see, the idea was to have it fitted like this, with the, the broader side like this, up against the inside of the door frame. But then, obviously, this is not going to work. So we modified it by making holes at basically the same places so that it can actually go in. So what the, but the plan is, is we're going to check now what the height must be. We're going to fit it level. I've got a level. 
and then we're just gonna hang the door in here so that's our next step but we have to put the door on basically and put it up against the wall so we can determine the height of the railing and I have to include about 10 millimeters for the uh, because there's a floor uh, there's a door guide that's going to be installed underneath and it has to slide above the door guide so that'll be the next thing let me go get some steps a marker and the door and then we'll do that quickly I'm going to make a mark at the top and then I'm going to lift that mark by 10 millimeters or um, yeah let's make it 10 millimeters just to give it that clearance so it can slide nicely and also the door guide will be there uh, you can make it a bit less you can make it up to seven millimeters but um, now let's stick to the 10 that they that they tell you and please girls don't be looking at my ass I know it's a gorgeous ass but it belongs to the wife no? Okay guys, so I have this perfect plan. I actually tested it now before I did the recording and it works. So, the riddle. How do you mark a hole this length from this side to this side? So the idea was simple, take a bit of grease or some copper slip in my case because that's all I had. Make the tip wet, put it through the two holes and mark it against the back of the wall and wherever the marks are, that's where you're going to draw. Let me show you. Get your rating level, put it on the spot where you want, and then we'll make a hole. There you go. There's your first mark. Now, where the copper slip is, now you can mark it off more permanently because it makes a mark. Clever, right? Eh? So let me quickly mark the whole wall. So we're taking a walkie. <laughs> it's a health tip. Remember to exercise. Okay, I'm back from my walk. So I got this nice tile drill that was given to me yesterday. Problem is, it's a five millimeter and the, the bolts that we are going to use or the screws that we are going to use are six millimeters. The reason for that is when I bought the railing, I obviously did not know that it has to be mounted into a wooden frame. So they only gave me uh, self tapper screws, wooden self tapper screws. And the only um, screws that I have are six millimeters. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start off drilling with a five millimeter drill into the tiles. And then we're gonna go over to a masonry six millimeter and complete the holes that way. Let's hope we don't crack any tiles. I already see one issue here. This one might crack the tile there, but um, let's see what happens. I was actually worried about that hole. That was the one that's on the edge. And it didn't crack. It actually went through very nicely. Also, I must say this little drill bit really doesn't take shit though. Wow! Okay, before I finish drilling the holes with the masonry drill, I first want to confirm the holes by putting the railing back using the punch, just feeling that it's going in everywhere because I can always, at this point, patch it up. I cannot patch it up once the hole is right through the wall, so let me first see and verify if the holes are right. Shall we finish them? I'm going to move over now to a 6mm masonry bit. I 
Okay, so all the holes are drilled, all the plugs are in. Only thing that remains now is to put the frame or the railing, the screws, and then putting them in permanently. Now we do have a high spot right here. We've got a high spot. The tile is doing this. So we do have movement on the rails. And it's fucking nothing I can do about it. Nothing, 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 nothing. It's gonna be like that. Sorry. Okay, so let's see if my plan works. Punch, hammer, rain. Every screw in, move them in, and then at least the railing is on. And it's in, and it's on, and I think I got kind of a little bit aggressive because it's flush against the wall, which means that a high spot, yeah, the whole thing is doing this now. So I still hope the door will slide. There's only one way to find out there. Check, 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 check. Ooh, I can level something at least. So I just had to take the rollers off again and then I lifted it up a bit and I put uh, something here underneath just to lift the door the little bit that I need and now we are hanging the rollers on. Okay, and once the rollers are on I'm going to adjust the door so that it is parallel with the frame. We're going to take that uh, spacers out underneath and then we'll test the door. The moment of truth. Shall we take the spacers out underneath and see if it slides before we do the final adjustment? Let's do that! And the door is hanging. And the door is sliding. Awesome. The ground is a bit. Um, <laughs> the floor is doing this. <laughs> let me show you guys. Uh, let me show you guys what it's doing. So I'm gonna do the final adjustment here. Sliding very smoothly. Look at that. It's awesome sliding. So I just need to do the final adjustment, and then here is our problem. It goes, and then it touches there. And it's on the floor, which means, let me just check, yeah, the floor is not really level, it's supposed to lift this much, okay, but, but, I will still take this as a win, definitely, um, let me finish adjusting the door, and securing that Securing the rollers. Maybe I can still lift it a little bit at the back and then we we'll see what happens. Okay guys, so the rollers are adjusted. As you can see they are secured with three screws and it slides like a dream. So to prevent this from happening, we're going to put a floor guide in that will keep the door nice and straight. Plus, the door won't open more than this because we still have to add the handles. So let's put up the handles next onto the door. And we also need to put the latch because obviously the wife wants to lock the door. But uh, yeah, the sliding mechanism is in. Introducing the door guide. I've already marked the places where it's going to be. And the door will be sliding in between the wall and the door guide and also prevent the door from doing this and if I really want to I can put a second one there but I think one will do the trick 
So let's put this one in quickly and see what happens. And this being typical wood bank or evolution, the power is off. Hi guys, it is four hours later and the electricity is finally back on. And I was able to fit my first door guide. As you can see, it's fitted nicely there. And the door slides nice and it prevents the door from doing this. So I think I'm going to put a second guide in there. And then we make sure the door is definitely not going to go anywhere once the door is closed. So let us quickly fit the second door guide there. There we go guys. Guide one, guide two. The door cannot be pushed open. And it slides quite good up and down. And here is the door on the other side. I think it looks very nice. Um, now I'm going to put on the handles. There we go guys, the door is finished. Let me show you, the handle is on. And there we go. Door is closed and the handle is on. I'm just gonna put the door stops in to prevent the door from going past the rails and also to prevent it from doing that and obviously doing that because you don't want to look at someone there so the door has to stop um, well the door has to stop there so I'm going to put a, a door stop on that side and another one somewhere on that side on the inside there we go guys, so the door stopper is in, now it's time to install the second one. Okay guys, so there's the second stopper. So, up to there. Then your door is totally closed and it doesn't uh, touch the handle on that side of the door, so the handle is fine. And of course when you open up this side, It stops, it won't go off the rails. All I have is obstacles today, <laughs> but I'm overcoming them. So to put the latch, I had to make a bit of a change. The latch was like three mils too short to be put on the side of the door. So I came up with a new idea. Check this out. Ta-da! I put it on the side of the door so that when it closes, now I'm just gonna hook it. I'm just gonna hook it now onto that side. Nine. No. And that's how you lock the door. That's no two. That's has no two. Unlock. As uh, unlocked. Awesome. Thanks, guys. So I installed back the hook at the back of the door and I also placed back the toilet roll and as you can see when you open up the door everything is 100% nothing is in the way and everything is basically back to where it was so yeah done thanks guys thanks for watching this channel if you like this video give me a thumbs up and then remember to subscribe to this channel and to hit the bell icon if you want to get notified of any further uploads. And yeah, that's my hanging door. Thanks for watching and cheers. Please head over to my webpage at www.cryptzone.co.za and come and check out the page. You will notice there is a lot of information on there. Hyperlinks are provided so that you don't have a problem going anywhere. Head up to my podcast page and come and see what am I currently working on on my podcast. There is also the CryptoZone live page, which I will update regularly to let you know when I'm going to do the next show like this one. The goal is to try and do one every week. Head on over to my CryptoZone YouTube page and come and check out what are the latest videos that I am working on and also what new videos is up and coming. 
If you have any queries or questions, don't hesitate to ask. You can email me at shoal.reaper at gmail.com.